Welcome to the channel. In honor of my 100th video, I'm going to be going over how to modify the save files of The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, so that players can give themselves unlimited resources and level up their crafting stations. This is for the Rift version. It will not work on PlayStation VR or on the Quest version. Before we get started, take a minute to like, subscribe, share the video if you enjoy the content. It helps. We're just getting started on the channel. Love to have you along for the ride. So let's get into it. The save files of The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Rift version use the Unreal Engine save format. This format is not compressed, it's not encrypted, but it is serialized. That means if you were to look at the save file in a text editor, it's not going to be very readable. There are some values you can see, there's some text you can see, but in general you're not going to be able to make much sense of it. So the first thing you have to do when you're looking to modify this file is convert it to a readable format so that you can find what you're interested in modifying and what those values are and how you might go about modifying them. So in order to do this we need an extraction tool. So I've created such an extraction tool based on a similar tool by 13x forever. The source code is all on GitHub. Uh, this basically takes the binary format of the save file which is as I said the Unreal Engine save format, some version of it, and it converts it or extracts the information and generates a JSON file from that save file. And the JSON file you can drop into a text editor and go through the values and read a lot of the information that's there. Not all the information, some of it's not converted. I'm not sure how complete either of our converters are, uh, but all the code is here. So you want to go to github.com slash substatica slash GVAS converter and these links will be in the description. Look over on the right under releases, click on the one tag, you'll see a release with assets that you can expand and just download the zip file. I've already done that. You can see down here we've got GVAS converter so I'll drag that to my desktop and we'll extract that later. So step one would be extracting the data to a JSON file so we can look at it and decide what we're going to change. The next step would be to edit the binary save file and to do that we need a hex editor. So. For that, I've chosen the Freeware HXD Freeware Hex Editor and Disk Editor. So just this site will be in the description as well, the link. Just scroll down to uh, download page, click on that, find the language um, that you would like, download the installer, and I've got that down here and I've, I've already installed it and we've got a little shortcut on our de desktop to HXD. So I'll just go ahead and open that right now. And that's what HXD looks like. So we'll shrink the browser for now and we'll extract the converter. So that's going to make a little directory on our desktop with the exe of this converter, a bunch of DLLs. For those interested they can go through the source code and see how well this works. But we've got the converter exe right there so we'll get to that in a second. Now we have to locate the save files. Now save files on my machine are at c slash users slash subst slash app data slash local twd saved save games maybe slightly different on your machine i'm not sure how much that varies um, but once you find the save location you're going to end up with something like this with a directory for each profile because you can have multiple profiles saved for the walking dead so find the ones that you want to edit go into that profile and there's going to be uh, a number of save files. It depends how long you've played the game and the, uh, it looks like it maxes out at around 15 save files because you can have multiple saves per profile. And if you want to find which the latest one is because they recycle, just sort by date modified and you're going to find out which one was last modified and that's going to be your most recent save. First thing you want to do in here is back up either the entire directory, which is a good idea anyways, or just back up the save that you want to modify or that you want to look at. So in this case, We'll take save 7, and we'll back it up, that was a copy paste right there, and then we'll copy the actual save file, and we'll go into our GVAS converter directory, and we'll paste it right in here, just for ease of, of pathing. So we'll shrink down those windows, we're getting a couple open. So next thing we want to do is actually run the extractor, which means we've got to open a command prompt or a PowerShell. So we go to File, Open Windows PowerShell. May as well open it as administrator. You probably don't need those privileges, but in this case, 
we'll just do that. And to, to run something from PowerShell, you want to type dot slash. In this case, we'll do we want GVAS converter exe, and then a space and the name of your save file, in this case, save7.sav. Hit enter. We're going to get parsing UE4 save file structure, converting to JSON, saving JSON, done. I'm not sure how long this method is going to work, so if you get errors at this point, um, this video might be too old. They may have changed something. Converter might need updating. Not a lot can be done at that point. But we're successful here. So that's all we need this for. And we should have alongside the save file in this directory now, we have save7.sav.json or JSON. And that's a, a structure that's readable. We can drag it into Notepad here. And we can see that all of a sudden we can we can read some data. We can read save game version, package version, engine version, uh, major, minor patch, all sorts of good stuff. We can also see uh, a bunch of letters and numbers in quotations. These are called GUIDs or GUIDs, identifying strings. So instead of putting the names of, of items or the names of resources into the save file, there's a code for each one, and that code represents, say, adhesives or rifle parts or a weapon or arrows or whatnot. So one way that you can match up, say, uh, adhesives to its unique identifier, this GUID number, is to find a save game where you have a, uh, and record the number of, say, adhesives you have. If you have 53 adhesives, then you can come back to this JSON file once you've extracted it, and you can search for the number 53. And then you'll be able to record the unique identifier that represents adhesives. Someone's already done this, and if we go to paste bin, we can see a list of GUIDs and what they represent. So we can grab the, the GUID that represents adhesives. We'll copy that, and this link will be in the description as well. We can search for that in the JSON file, and we're going to find out that we have the value 39 for quantity of that GUID. So we also have durability for things like resources. Durability is negative one. That means it's uh, obviously it doesn't have a durability. Well, some other information here that um, you know I'm not too concerned with, and then probably don't understand anyways. So we've got our GUID and we've got our quantity, 39. So like I said, if you were to go back and forth between the save in game and record the values of the quantity of resources and then come back and search for them, you'd be able to figure out which GUID represented which resource if, if those happen to change or whatnot. So now that we've found a value that we want to change, we want to go find that value in the binary file, in the actual save file. And that can be done using this address property. This is a hex. Um, destination in the file or hex address in the file. This 0x is, is telling you that the value is a hex value, so we don't need to copy that. We'll just copy everything after the x. Now we're going to go to hxd, the hex editor that we've installed, and we're actually going to drag our save file, not the JSON file, just save7.sav. We'll drag it into hxd, the hex editor. So here we have a uh, the hex editor on the left you'll see the hex representation of the binary data of the file and on the right we have the decoded text and, and some other stuff that we're not too concerned with and then offset offset is, is kind of representative of the, of the address that we just grabbed so to go to that address we copied I'm going to press control G and then you want to make sure that this little hex radio button is checked off we don't want to go decimal or, or the other one uh, so we'll go hex We'll paste in the hex address of the value that we want to change. And we'll see it jumped us down here to quantity int property. So that all looks good, right? And we have uh, above quantity, uh, we have a GUID up here and then a bunch of kind of strange characters. And that's the GUID represented in a, in a different way. That's the identifier, how it's stored in this binary file. And that's one of the things the converter does is take this garbled string and turn it into those numbers and digits uh, and, and dashes that represent the actual unique identifier. But down here, we're interested in the int property of quantity. And you can see here, the, the uh, address that we got started us at this 00. 
this is a byte. We don't want to touch this byte, these two numbers. The actual value starts after it. The actual value is 27. Now, if we were to take that 27 and open up our calculator and switch it to programmer, which can be done in the menu. Now we're in programmer mode, and we want to switch it to hex. There's a hex button. This one's a bit different than the one I'm used to, but the hex button, type in 27, and then switch it to dec, a decimal. And there's our value of 39 for adhesives. So that's the current value. Now we want to change the value to something else. If we wanted to change it to some arbitrary integer, we'd have to convert that integer to a hexadecimal uh, representation. Uh, I've already done that for uh, a popular uh, value to change to, which would be 999. So the hex representation of 999, in the case of this file, because it's kind of reversed, um, is E70300. So the actual value for this integer property of quantity is 27000000. This next byte, 14, is not related to the, the int property, the integer property that we're interested in. That is where we stop. We don't touch that 14. That's related to the next value. So we're interested in the, in this case, the 27 might be a slightly different number depending on, on the number of resources currently in that, in that save file. In this case, 39 adhesives means 27. So it's those four bytes we want to change, and we want to change them to 999, which is E70300. So we start at our 27, make sure we're in the hexadecimal section. Don't click over here because then you're going to be messing with this stuff, and you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you're starting on the 27, and you want to type in E70300000. And save. So that saved 999 for adhesives. If we were to load, load up the game, we actually have to copy the save file back to the save directory, run the game, we'd have 999 ad adhesives. So that's how you increase the quantity or decrease the quantity, I guess, if you wanted to, of any of the resources. That's going to work for ammo, but I believe ammo, you have to have at least one of them, say one shotgun round or one nine millimeter round, for an entry to show up in the save file. So you can only do that, I believe, and I may be wrong about this, once you've collected some of that ammo. That shouldn't be too hard. As long as you get some, you can, you can level them up. And actually, if you um, level up all the stations, which we're going to do in a second, and you have unlimited resources, like I just showed you how to do, then you can create your own ammo anyway, so, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the other unique resource, as far as ammunition is concerned, is regular arrows. Now, they're kind of an outlier in the game in that you can actually store arrows that have um, their durability has gone down. So f for other ammunition, the durability really doesn't come into play, even with explosive arrows and, and lure arrows, they're one-time use. But for regular arrows, you can actually store them as ammunition, but you can have multiple different durabilities. And for that reason, you may see multiple entries for the regular arrow unique identifier in your save file. They can also be shot around your location and therefore you'll see other entries for arrows that actually exist outside of your, your uh, ammo storage. But your ammo storage may have um, a bunch of arrows at 50 durability, a bunch of arrows at 30 durability. There's probably a, a limited amount there. I mean, how many could you shoot? But uh, in that case, if you want to max out your uh, regular arrows, you want to look for the unique identifier for regular arrow and you want to make sure that it has slot index or slot IDX of zero. That means it's it's in your storage. It's not in the environment. You didn't shoot the arrow into a wall. There's other representations of arrows in the save file and they kind of represent the where that arrow sits in the environment. If it's in your storage it's going to have slot index of zero. The other thing you want to look for is a durability of 100. And if you find durability of 100 slot index zero for the arrow unique identifier, that's probably going to be the entry that represents the number of full durability arrows that you have in your ammunition storage. So that's kind of an outlier and an interesting one at that. So that's how you would update resources. You can go through all of the unique identifiers for the various crafting resources and you can change them all, all of their quantity values to E70300 and that's going to put them all at 999. The other thing we want to do is 
bump up the level on our three crafting stations to the max, which is 10. So to do that, we're going to find those entries in the JSON file. Um, so I think we can search for crafting table. Does that find anything? Crafting table levels. So this is what we want. If we scroll up from that, there's an interesting one called bonus progression station. I don't know what that is, uh, but we have survival progression station at, at value three. We have gun progression station at value three, and we have gear progression station at value four. So again, to do this portion of the change, we want to copy the hex address of the gear progression station. Remember, don't copy the 0x, just copy the value afterwards. We don't want to go back to our hex file. Press Control G to go there. Delete the value that's been saved in there. Make sure you have the hex radio box or radio button checked off. Paste your go to value. And that's going to jump us down to our gear progression stations. So we have BP, gear progression station, or gear progress station, sorry, C. So we have this string, and then we have 00. zero which is a terminator uh, byte. We don't want to touch that, but right after the 00, zero we have a 0, 04. So that represents our value of, of 4. Now this value starts at 0 and goes to 9. It doesn't go to 10 in, in the code here, 0 based. So in order to max this station out, out to 10, we want to change this 4 to a 9. And because the number is so low, we don't have to worry about conversion from integer to hex. Uh, a 0 is a 0, a 4 is a 4, and in this case, 0, 9 is a 9. So that's our gear progress station. We've just leveled up to 9. We can see right under, we don't have to go back to the JSON file for this even, we have gun progression station, or gun progress station, sorry. And then we have our terminator byte right past it, which is 0, 0, and then we have 0, 3. So we want to change that 0, 3. Make sure we're in the byte section or the hex section, not in the string section. And we want to change that to 0, 9 as well. And then we want to go down. We've got survival station, uh, survival progress station. And then we've got 0, 0, the terminator byte, which tells us that string has ended. And we want to go to the next byte, which is 0, 3. Make sure we're on the left, changing the hex, not touching the text. And we want to change that to 0, 9. So we've got our 3. We can double check. But we've backed up the file anyway, so you can as long as you've backed it up, you can try it and fail as many times as you want. So we save. Now we've updated one resource to 999 quantity, and we've updated the three crafting station levels to 10. 10, 10, 10. So that's going to unlock all sorts of potential earlier in the game for some antics. To actually uh, engage this save file, we've got to we'll close it from here shrink some of these windows down that we don't need. We have it here that we've um, actually HXD I think has saved it or a backup already. I guess that's an option but we want to grab save7.sav. We'll copy that and we'll go back to our save location on the file system and we'll overwrite the existing save7. So there you have it. That's the basics of modifying your save file in the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Rift version. Thanks for watching. Like I said, if you enjoy the content, like, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.